You did it anyway? Uh-huh. Do you have the jerseys for tonight? Yes. No, 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 no. Seriously. Do you have the jerseys for tonight? Yes. Yes. Sweetheart, yes. Lexi, hang up. Yes, sweetheart. I should never have gotten this woman pregnant. Do not procreate, David. Reproduction is a very bad idea. Do not reproduce ever. Hey, I'm sorry, but... Pay back some money that I owe. I've, uh, I've built a little hydroponic greenhouse in my apartment. You're, you're growing pot? And you're the only person I know with a green thumb. And, and you want me to grow pot? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Like, that is the one thing missing for me right now to achieve total happiness. Getting into a drug ring. Because the pressure of my wife calling me every three minutes because she's about to give birth to my first child isn't intense enough. How much do you owe? Eighty. Eighty? Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand? When you say it with that face, it... It does make it seem like a lot. How do you get yourself into these situations, David? Eighty thousand dollars? What happened? How do you owe someone eighty thousand? I borrowed money to invest in new tech. Oh, that is a pyramid scheme. It is not a pyramid scheme. It, the guy was arrested. Those charges were unrelated. He was arrested. David. And now, David, I love you like a son. I am your son. Which is why I love you like a son. But if you don't have our new jerseys for tonight's game... I have the jerseys. It, you gotta have the jerseys. It's the team picture. I have the jerseys. You won't have the jerseys. has been denied. But if I don't get the $80,000, there's people that are going to come and drown me. Can you please put that down on your little form that there's people that are going to come drown me? You do not have the necessary collateral. And that is why we're not going to give you any money. Basically, then, you're just a big goddamn pawn shop. No, we're not a pawn shop. You're a it's pawn a shop with fancy furniture. And for all these reasons, I have to turn down your application. I'm very sorry. All right. I understand. This will hold up. Excuse me? I said, all right, I understand. This will hold up, asshole. Excuse me, you just said something. No. no just that. You said something. No. Uh -huh. 
on our mother's yes on our mother's grave the jerseys are with me in the truck as we speak He said beautiful flowers. I did. And Mr. Bernstein takes such great care of them. <sighs> Have you been, David? No, I'm sorry. I was trying to pay back some money that I owe. And then... I, I understand, but why can't you call or text? I mean, why can't I come to your apartment anymore? I never said you couldn't come to my place. Are you hiding something? Nothing. You sure you're not hiding anything in your apartment? Nope. I'm pregnant. That's great. on my own. What do you mean on your own? I want a child, okay? But I don't want a father who just disappears because he gets too busy. You're unreliable. I mean, you've got you've got money problems. I mean, you, you basically don't have a life. But this is not a life. I have a life. You don't have a life. I mean, people who have a life do not ring pregnant women's doorbells at 3 o'clock in the morning. I didn't know you were pregnant. But David, you would know. If you just Call me every once in a while. I guess, uh, I guess at first, you know, for a second there, I was in shock. I mean, it was a shock. But then, you know, the, uh, that feeling of fear went away, and I got this feeling that this could be the most beautiful thing that ever happened to me. Stevie, no. Hey, Stevie, no. Hey, it's three in the morning. Go back to bed. Go back to bed. Back to bed. Not in the sandbox. Hey, where are you going? No, don't go in the sandbox. Don't go in the sand. Not in the sandbox. <laughs> you got to talk him into getting an abortion. What? You have to. How could you say such a thing? How can you say stuff like that in front of your children? My children know that they're too old to be aborted. I'm realizing that I might want a kid. You are a free man. You do not want kids. Kids are a black hole. They will suck up all of your energy, your money, your time, your hair. Remember when I had great hair? I can't get it up anymore. 
How can you talk like this in front of your children? Oh, I can say anything I want in front of my children because they don't listen to me. My children do not pick up on the frequencies of my voice. And I'm telling you, I have a problem achieving a full erection now. It's not normal for a man of my age to no longer have a nice big erection. Hey, what are you doing? Listen to me. Go back to bed. Not in the sandbox. Don't get in the sand. Don't go in the sand. As your friend, no. No, 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 no. Hey, come on. Dad. Back to bed, honey. Trying to have a conversation. Please stop that. Daddy. Okay, stop that now. I'm telling you. I think I might want a kid. As your friend and as your lawyer, David, may I be brutally frank with you? Sure. You don't have the skills to bring up a child. I need order in my life. And this is order? I think this is beautiful. David Wozniak. No, no, sorry, David Wozniak. Uh, the back door was already broken into. Uh, my name is Mark Williams. I'm, I'm an attorney. I've been trying to contact you for several days now, Mr. Wozniak. No, no, sorry, David Wozniak. Sorry, I'm cleaning ombre. David está in Mexico. I do not have a great deal of time. No, I shall be brief. Um, between 1991 and 1994, you donated sperm under the pseudonym Starbuck at the privately owned Grabowski Levitt Clinic, which I represent. No. That was not a question. It was a statement. We have all the documents necessary to prove it. No, no, sorry. Uh... Well, over the course of 33 months, you were a very, very frequent donor. You donated 693 times, in exchange for which uh, you received the sum of $24,255. Your sperm is of a very high quality. Thank you. I'm sure your sperm is also uh, high-end. Uh, certain complications arose, uh, which meant that for a period, uh, Mr. Grabowski Levitt gave your sperm to all the women in his clientele. You have sired 533 children, and 142 of them wish to know your identity. What? You are the biological father of 533 children. No, no, sorry, David Wozniak. At the time of each of your multiple donations, you signed a confidentiality agreement. Legally, the Grabowski Levitt Clinic is obligated to protect your identity. But a subset of your children is contesting the legality of those documents. They wish to know who Starbuck is. Yo no soy David Wozniak! Yo no soy David Wozniak! Yo no soy David Wozniak! Adios. You say that for each of the 693 sperm donations, you signed a confidentiality agreement under the pseudonym of Starbuck. Every time. Always. I always sign the confidentiality agreement. Always. You signed those documents before or after executing the manual labor? Before. And you always wrestled the dragon alone? Yes. Frankly, I'm disappointed you never told me about any of this. Usually you call up your friends after you get laid, not after you wrestle the dragon alone, but if you absolutely insist, I promise you I will phone you every single time I fly solo. That's an interesting offer, unfortunately way too time consuming. Listen, they claim that your right to privacy should take a backseat to their basic human right to know who their biological father is. It's very complex. Very, very 
complex. It's it's really complex. Do you know that this is the dream of every lawyer to argue a case this significant, a case that will leave its mark, that will stand as a precedent? My mother always said that I would never amount to anything. I'll show that old bitch. What do we do now? Uh, as your lawyer, I suggest you cease masturbating in fertility clinics. Do I have to get a real lawyer? I can't afford a real lawyer, no. I'm going to call the Bar Association today, reactivate my license. You don't have a license? I lost it because of a small formality, something about a missing dated form and a bribe. It's nothing. Oh, uh, yes. In hopes of persuading Starbucks to meet with them, 142 of the children in your lawsuit want you to know who they are. This envelope contains the profiles of 142 of your children. Do not open it. Don't call me that. Can Susan take the kids? Well, she's not investing all her energy in her new career. She prefers to wisely use her time sleeping with men I don't like. Do you have a babysitter? Why? You need someone to watch over that envelope? I know I shouldn't have, but I've opened it. Worst idea ever. I picked out one of the profiles. I just picked one. One. Do you know whose profile I picked? Andrew Johansson. We gotta go. of myself that hit that game-winning shot. I mean, do your kids play professional basketball? No, not to my knowledge, but I will inquire. They don't tell me everything. So I've been thinking that we could plead insanity. What? I don't know. Maybe you would not be held responsible for actions taken while mentally unstable. 
that we can bank on your mental problems. I don't have mental problems. I don't have mental problems. When we're in court, I want you to say it exactly that way. One, two, three, one, <laughs> Hit me! Hit me! They're going up the Okay, don't care. The position is your friend. I have officially decided to have a life. I'm at work. I'm going to convince you that I deserve to be this kid's father. I'm sorry, excuse me. Four days in a row, I have not had any sleep. I've never been so happy in my life. And I never thought that I would love anyone that much. He poops four times a day, and I think I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I think I'm going crazy because I swear his diapers make me so proud. I'm totally convinced that my child takes way better dumps than any other kid. Your brother wants parental leave so he can spend more time admiring his son's diapers. It's the law, okay? I'm entitled to parental leave. I had three kids, and two hours after each of them was born, I was here serving customers. You absolutely have to have kids, David. What? My girlfriend's pregnant. You got a girlfriend? Yeah. Oh, David, you're going to love it. You are going to love it. Your kid is never going to poop as good as my kid, but you are going to love it. I can't believe that. No. Oh my god. I'm begging you, man. I really, really need you to do this for me. I can't even talk to you. Yeah. Can I help you? I'll have a, uh, Espresso to go, please. I said to go. Is there a lid? Do you have a lid? Usually you get a lid when you order a coffee to go. Would it be possible to act in a polite manner? What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about a little please and thank you.
A little thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that not considered cool by your generation anymore? Who the hell are you, man? I'm just saying, if you smiled a little more, maybe there'd be more people in here. If you want to be a waiter... Well, there's the thing. I don't want to be a waiter. I'm an actor. I'm an actor missing the opportunity of a lifetime right now, and you, because you give me three bucks and a quarter, you want me to smile? You want me to smile when I am totally pissing away my life? Doesn't have to be a big smile. <laughs> Have a nice day. Good afternoon. I'll take care of the coffee shop. Just for now. Customers come in sometimes. It isn't always empty. I can't leave you with the shop. But it's the role of a lifetime. Yeah, and how do I know you won't just walk off with the cash? You can leave with my truck full of meat. And why would you do this? Satisfaction of knowing that you help someone make something of himself. Bring it back without a scratch. Okay, uh, people might come in. Uh, I can figure out how to make a cup of coffee. <laughs> And you decide to disappear? In the whole family business, you know you've got the easiest job, right? And in spite of having the simplest job, you manage to do the job badly. It's like every day you find a new way to push back the frontiers of incompetence. And there are only two components to your chosen occupation. Get meat, deliver meat. It's not what I ordered. It's free. Think it, it's free. Why is our truck still full of meat? What? Why have you only taken our meat out for a drive? Yeah, I'll have, uh, tell me who you are before I call the cops. I'm the waiter. I'm the owner. I do the hiring here. Josh got called in for the audition of a lifetime. Fine. He can look for another job then. Sir, it was the audition of a lifetime. That's not the problem. What's the problem? He's not a good actor. He has never been cast. Never. He's a good kid, but he's wasting his life. He's fired. Look, this whole thing was my idea. So, I guess it's your fault if he can't pay his rent. I lost my job. Lost your job. I got the part. You got the part. Yeah, they love me. <laughs> you got the part? As of today, I'm an actor. <laughs> Congratulations, Thanks. man. Thanks, man. Thanks. Wow. <laughs>
I knew it. But I knew you were gonna bail on me. Look, how the hell am I supposed to pay the rent? Okay, wait. Wait, wait! The cash is on the table. I'm four dollars short. Peter, you owe me money. No, you owe me money. Okay, so then what are you gonna do about it? You owe me too. Miss, don't worry about the money. You, uh, won your pizza. Okay, you won, you won the contest. You won, uh, our, uh, you won our eat and win contest. I don't know what you want, but this is not a good time. I'm not doing too well right now, so can you leave my apartment? Yes. Yes, a absolutely. No, uh, no, no need for that at all. Um, it's only I can uh, I can see that you're not doing very well, and uh, we have a a policy that's that's very, very, very strict in the uh, condition in which we can leave our customers. You're here at uh, at Rocco's Pizzeria. We we believe in a more humane pizza. So is everything okay? Miss? A word with you. Yes. The good news is that for the moment we just happen to have a spot open in our rehab program. The bad news is that your daughter seems totally uninterested in the program. Since she is still a minor, it's your decision. It's a very good program. We've gotten great results. I'll talk to her. Hi. How are you? Please sign the release. I don't know who you are, but I'm begging you to sign the papers. They have a great program here. I can stop on my own. I mean, I just had the scare of my life. Please sign the papers. You think the program is... No, if I do the program, then I'm going to be surrounded 24 hours a day by addicts. And I guarantee I will relapse. Using these programs, they stop when they want to stop. They will help you. They'll lock me up. And I'll lose my job. I just, I just got this great job, and I have nothing in my life besides this job. 
thought. Thank you. I'm going to sign the release. Worst decision that you'll ever make. She says she'll be happy. Right now, she doesn't need to be happy. She needs to stop using. And she will. Do you love your daughter? I do. Tell her. Go tell her that you love her. And tell her that you will not sign that release. Start work tomorrow at uh, eight o'clock. Okay, and you'll be there at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Okay. Well, uh, in my life, I have a tendency to make very, very, very bad decisions. Tell me that I haven't just made another wrong decision. You haven't. Just take it. Oh, yeah. 
be the father of 533 children. It's not possible. It is impossible to be the father of 533 children. It is impossible to be the father of four children. Right. Exactly. It's impossible. But I can be their guardian angel. Their guardian angel? They need me. And they need a guardian angel. They need someone to look out for them. And I fathered him, so it's my responsibility. So you're telling me that your purpose on Earth is to look out for, like a superhero, 533 children. I didn't say superhero. Out of curiosity, when you're looking out for these children, would you be wearing any kind of cape? I didn't say superhero, I said guardian angel. So no cape, but you will have wings and play the harp. You know, I'm starting to feel more and more comfortable with this insanity plea. I do not have mental problems. Say it exactly like that to the judge. Thanks. Hey there. So today is the first ultrasound. David, look, I need I need a friend. I'm a friend. I want that to be clear. But it's clear. Okay, well, let's get going. I drink a gallon of water, and I'm not allowed to pee before the ultrasound. So is that the lake there? That is. Which one? Which one's the lake? The white spot that you see. Is that the head of pie? That is the head of pie. Okay. And we're going to see right the arm. That's amazing. Isn't it? So now the, all the organs are okay. Yeah, perfect. I okay. just passed by the baby's head, and there's the belly. Oh my God. Did you see the belly? And there's the whole baby. See the whole belly? That's incredible. David, I'm not sure. Not sure of what? Look at that. They're monsters. I mean, look at that one. Look at them. Emma. This is the most absolute beautiful thing that can happen to anyone. Who are you? The, the, the Dalai Lama? What do you mean the most beautiful thing? And look at that one. He's eating his own booger. It's a great source of protein. Oh. Listen, you are going to be a good mother. So, here's what's inside. Absolutely do not trust you at all. 
What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to declare you the father. Yes! No, David, wait. I'm going to declare you the father on probation. Father on probation. Yeah. You get no slack. For how long? Forever. Will our child have to call me daddy on probation? No. Will I have to wear a uniform that will separate me from the regular daddies? No. Then I accept. <laughs> We're having a kid. We're having a kid. Yes. <laughs> He's over there. Great. Thank you. You're not going to visit with him? No. I, uh, I just wanted to stop by and see him, and, uh, well, now I have, so... He would really enjoy it. You were there. You did really good. Okay. Great. Thank <laughs> you. 
just want to say that um, I don't know all of you here, but uh, you're all focused a lot on finding Starbucks. But whatever happens, you're all brothers and sisters. You've all found one another. Adoptive father. I'm. I'm, uh, I'm. Ryan's adoptive father. Ryan. Well, he's not here tonight. He's. Uh, he's at a home for the disabled. He's disabled, and he just couldn't make it. Hey. 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 Uh, Kristen, this is. Uh, Taylor. Yeah, Taylor saved my life. He saved my life at the pool. He's a. He's a lifeguard, and um, I'm the adoptive father of Ryan. Uh, he couldn't be here because he's handicapped. Oh, you're the father of one of the children? Adopted. Oh, wow. How's it going? Hey, 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 Josh. Yeah. Uh, um, Josh, this is uh, Taylor, and this is Kristen. Hey, hey, Josh, how's it going? Josh worked at a coffee shop, and he is now an actor. Josh, this is Taylor. Taylor is a lifeguard. He saved my life a few months ago. And this is Kristen, orders pizza. She's also an ex-drug addict, and I am wow. the adoptive father <laughs> of a young disabled man who couldn't be here. And his name is Ryan. Hey. We got from the park. Hey. All right. Great. Um, Josh, Kristen, and Taylor. And uh, Kristen has uh, got a great job, and she's still... Um, yeah, still working for me, Dad. Still the job, which is great, and everyone's doing great. And I'm the adoptive father of uh, a disabled, uh, a young disabled man, uh, Ryan, who was just... Obviously, uh, unfortunately, was in conflict with some of the disabled uh, days of doing the activities and stuff that we're involved in. So, got the stuff for him. Got to run out of here, but everyone looks, everyone looks good. Good to see you. Great. Great to see you. Taxi! As of tonight, you are officially part of a mass action lawsuit against yourself. What the hell are you doing here? A bit of reconnaissance work. What the hell are you doing here? I was following one of my kids. And then they hey, why are you doing this? 
who does things like that? I don't know. I was curious. Stop. Stop. Stop what? Stop everything for the rest of your life. Every time you have an idea, I want you to come to me. And as your friend, I will shoot your idea down. You're not a normal person, David. I am a normal person. David, we've known each other for 20 years. I can tell you for a fact, you are not normal. I'm very normal. Really? Uh, what about Mariuka? I don't see the point. Five years ago, you married a Russian woman that you had never met. She needed to get into the country, and she promised to clean my apartment for a year. And she disappeared after three days with her real husband. I mean, David, how much money did you lose importing Cuban cigars? That guy looked very honest. He was in his bathing suit! Since when does anybody do business with a man in his bathing suit? Listen, for the first time in my life, I think I'm doing the right thing. You're not doing the right thing. Stop seeing your kids! David Wozniak? No, no, sorry, David Wozniak. All the profiles. And I saw on your overdue bills that your name is David Wozniak. I was sitting behind you at the hotel. My name is Vigo. I'm your biological son. Are you going to expose me? I don't know. I don't even really know why I ever wanted to meet you. Who are you? What do you do for a living? I work at a meat store. I'm a vegetarian. So, you murder animals? No, I deliver the meat. I don't murder it. I chauffeur it around. Leo Tolstoy says that if a man earnestly seeks a righteous life, his first act of abstinence is from animal food. I did not know that. Sir Thomas More said the utopians feel that slaughtering our fellow creatures gradually destroys the sense of compassion, which is the finest sentiment of which our human nature is capable. That's interesting. Can we keep this our secret? Can I stay here a few days? I need to get to know you. It has only been two weeks and he has become unbearable. Again this morning he called me three times. That's three times this morning. He's picking up all of my time. Let's do whatever he wants. We can't let him expose you. Long conversations. Long like police interrogations. He feels a need to bond. Do whatever he wants, or he will expose you. He wants to point out books that are so dense and so esoteric that, that it's impossible to make heads or tails of it. And then he'll twist it 
and ask if I agree with it, and then he'll use it to prove that somehow I'm full of shit. I'm not having conversations with him, Brett. I'm in a chess game that I don't realize that I'm in, and it's exhausting. It's draining. No. Answer it. No. Oh, he has to answer it. Anything he wants. Hey, I got you a kill silence. You got me a what? Kill silence. Get in here. I got you a triple monster bird. Yes, please. Hey, should you be painting like this? Because I can do this. I can do the painting. I'm happy to do it. Thank you for being here. I'm glad I'm here. But I'm excited to do the painting. Yeah? No, for now, let me do the painting. All right. Okay. I'm going to get some French fries. You got French fries, too? Yes. Did you get me? And there might be something else in there. Really? Oh. Uh, A little treat? Uh, you got me two burgers. So I try to cancel tomorrow night with Emma, and I think I can get off a bit early so we can do whatever. Whatever you want. Tomorrow night will be Vico's choice. All right, I'm off. Good game, David. Everything okay? Yeah. You want to play? Yeah. All right, come on, get your stuff. Let's go. You gotta hurry. Careful, 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 careful. You gotta have. You have any sweat pants or anything? Huh? No. You can't go. You don't want to wear that stuff. It's not a nightclub. You go. It's a best. Shorts for me? I don't think my shorts are gonna fit you. Oh. You just gotta dribble, you gotta dribble, you just, you just dribble. Dribble, dribble, you gotta dribble, you gotta dribble. Why does he need to dribble? David, you absolutely have to be there next Saturday. Everybody's gonna be there. Actually, I have plans next Saturday with Emma. But you were the one who came up with this whole concept of brothers and sisters finding one another. Yeah, I understand, but I already have plans with Emma. Anyway, I spent a heck of a lot of time with you. You know, I also have a real family. Family. You said a real family. No. You, you, just because... You, you decided to turn the page on that period of your life doesn't mean we, we don't exist. We exist. We exist for real. We're also your real family. Vigo. Vigo! is I hope that you're happy. I hope you realize that I had to lie to Emma to be here. That I lied to the woman carrying my child. Your real child. You go, we have talked about the incident a lot. I don't think we need to continue to dwell on our little misunderstanding. I am here. Now, do you see that I am here? Do you see that I am here? With your fake kids. Fake? Fake thing? What the hell are you talking about? I mean, if we're not real, what are we? Nietzsche said, screw Nietzsche, screw kindergarten, Kierkegaard, I think it's this way, screw Nietzsche, screw Kierkegaard, and screw, uh, the, uh, you can't even come up with one more, that's it, you're done at two, look, screw all of those dudes, none of those guys had 533 real kids. Did you bring me here to expose me? No. I'm going to keep you all to myself.
It's a secret family recipe. We don't like this. Right. <laughs> wow! You see what happens when the tofu hits the grill? Nothing! Exactly what happens when the tofu hits our taste buds. <laughs> great time. So, uh, well, I guess this is it. Have a great day.
seem way too relaxed. This is a great moment for me. It's a new stage in our relationship. No. 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 It's really important that you know there is no truth in anything they are going to say about me. None. That you must understand they love to humiliate me. They're monsters, really. They are monsters. I want to uh, propose a toast to Emma because I think it's important that you know that this uh, rite of passage, rite of passage, uh, well, it's not just about humiliating David, although it is one of the objectives. And if we have exposed David's past to the harsh light of day, well, you know, I think it's important because you got to know what you're getting into. And now that you know all this, I have some more pictures. Not Sniper. Sniper? It was his rock band. They wore a lot of makeup. It was the 80s. Everybody wore makeup. I didn't wear makeup in the 80s. <laughs> but look, now that all this is known, I think it's also very important for me to know that the Wozniaks have had some wonderful times and some hard times. No. That... When my wife and I were newlyweds, we always dream of having a honeymoon in Italy. <laughs> but we didn't have much money. Then we had children. <laughs> we told ourselves someday, well, we're old. But time passed. You have to make the most of the present. We all make the most of the uh, present. Yes, yeah, 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 the most of the present. Mm -hmm. When my wife fell ill, David came over one day with plane tickets to Venice. He'd seen to everything. The hotel near Dodge's Palace, the gondolas. <laughs> then later on, three sons flew over and joined us. We had a big family dinner near Sandbox Square. <laughs> David paid for everything. David. He does things like that. If you are able to live with his countless faults, you will also live through some marvelous times. <laughs> Let us bring. No, oh, come, come on, on, Dad, please. Let's drink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your father is adorable. Yeah. I can't believe you brought your whole family to Venice. How did you pay for that? I had money. When you were 20? Yeah. Wow. What kind of job did you have that would pay for a trip to Venice? It was a manual labor type job. That was an awesome meal. Almost. All right, let's bring it. Open the floodgates here. Have fun. Okay, have a good day at school, guys. Have a good time. It's okay to like recess. How are you? Look at these angels. My man, how you feeling? Have fun, buddy. you lie to your girlfriend, that's par for the course on truthfulness as a basis of a good, strong relationship. But I'm not your girlfriend, David. So, before you tell me that you spent the weekend with Frodo and Gandalf and Bilbo Baggins, why don't you go ahead and take a look at this? Well, as you can attest, the reporter won't be winning any prizes for his journalistic skills, but apparently his story was picked up by CNN and Fox. And even the BBC. Which means 
when you go to bed tonight, four or five billion people will be asking, who the fuck is Starbuck? Now tell me, is this good news for us? Does this augur well for our trial? Is this the type of situation over which we can regain control? The answer is yes. Now we go on the offensive. A countersuit. We too are going to sue the clinic. What for? Substantial punitive damages. It's the clinic's duty not to do anything to jeopardize your anonymity. By overusing your donations, they've given rise to a substantial, well-funded challenge to your anonymity, which has now generated extensive media coverage. I mean, you should hear the stuff that people are saying about Starbucks. What are they saying about Starbucks? Terrible things. But it's good. It's fine because our countersuit, David, your debt problems will go away. We're going after big, big money. It is all over Twitter. It is all over the net. No way is this guy coming out of the closet. No way. At work, every meeting you go into, no matter what you say, everyone will always be thinking, hey, it's El Mastabator. 33 kids, he's donated 693 times. Boy, this guy was making money hand over fist. I can't believe it. Oh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, listen, you went by the code name Starbuck. Starbuck? I think chock full of nuts would have more like it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you should read some of these tweets. The last kid was an accident. I guess he was watching a rerun of Baywatch, and it just happened. <laughs> I had no idea this could actually be a job. I mean, I knew it could be a hobby. What do you think about all this Starbucks business? Oh, it's horrible. What's horrible? It's horrible. You don't think it's absolutely horrible? I don't know. What was he thinking? Well, he obviously wasn't thinking that they would use his sperm so much. And he obviously wasn't thinking that they would choose his profile so often. Yeah, I help you. Uh, yeah, do you have a stroller for 533 children? No. No, no. He doesn't. Because it's not normal to have 533 children. It's not normal. Where the hell are you going? I, I don't know. It goes in the back. In the back. Hey. Hey, okay. David. Your brothers are in the office. They want to see you. They wanted a hundred grand. A hundred grand? I mean, Pop didn't have it, you know? So they tried to drown him. What were you thinking? Tell me, David, what were you thinking? Get the cash. David, get the cash. Unbelievable. Dad, listen. Go that way, David. Go that way. Let's, uh, Let's do the counter suit. Excellent. Excellent. Come on in. All right. What would happen if we no longer respected these types of agreements? Nothing less than an unlimited quantity of chaos. Custody battles. Uh, possible intrusions upon happy families, and this on either part's side. Mothers 
showing up on donors' doorsteps? Donors suddenly wanting visitation rights? Wanting to partake in important decisions about religion, about schooling? None of the parties were coerced into signing this agreement. And nowhere have I seen an expiration date. What did you guys think? Why don't I understand when you were talking? Uh, well, you see, this is, this is a complex situation. How about for the other guy? Well, no. Uh, the other guy is wrong. Grandma's right. I think you can lose again. Did she say that? Okay. okay. Well, all right. Thanks, kids. Uh, you can all go to bed. Is that going to be your argument in court? That will work in court. You can't send the real judge to bed. Yes, I can. Daddy can send anyone to bed. And right now, you're all going to bed. I'll go. These are children who are lost. They are lost in the wilderness. And uh, they want to know who their father is. I mean, is that too much to ask? And uh, what, would, what would happen if we no longer accepted these types of agreements? Nothing more than an unlimited quantity of chaos. Um, uh, I can, oh, that's, is that okay? Here we are outside of the New York I feel like this is an easy case to win. What I'm saying is, which fundamental right should, should take more importance here? I've been a musician pretty much my whole life. And when I write music, I write it because I think when I say this, I speak for everyone. Plus, at least I know for me, didn't actually was able to grow up with the dad. I would like to meet the guy, the man who created me. And there's a lot of transitions in my life that I've come across. You know, it's central to who I am. You know, it's, it's really all I've thought about. Just want to feel like I have a, a part of myself. Last ultrasound that is on Friday at 2. Do you think that you can make it there? There is no contract. Okay? They've broken the contract. They break with the contract. The man signed an anonymity agreement for 693 donations. He has a right to punitive damages because you should hear what people are saying about him now. You, you gotta be prepared. How did you do it? So we hope that it has been made clear that the intentional blocking of this vital information has had and will continue to have a negative psychological impact on each and every single one of Starbucks children. In finishing, while the donor may have bargained for confidentiality with the clinic and um, the parents may have uh, accepted that confidentiality as a condition to receiving the sperm donation. The children didn't agree to anything. Yet they are the ones, they are the ones most directly affected. This makes no sense. Thank you.
These are some great kids. Without the anonymity clause, none of them would be here. And not to have these, these beautiful kids, that would be a, a great loss. We need the anonymity clause. The court will now take the matter under advisement. Hey, I don't know, David. I do not know. What don't you know? I know absolutely nothing. My mother was right. I'm useless and I'm out of my league. You should have got a real lawyer, David. be seated. In the adjudicated action, the parties will receive a detailed document in which you will read that Starbuck is entirely and without reservation entitled to remain anonymous. He will also be entitled to $200,000 in punitive damages from the Grabowski Levitt Clinic. You are adjourned. Starbuck, therefore, will be entitled to remain completely anonymous. He also will receive $200,000 in damages. Yes! And after speaking with their lawyer, yes! he stated this is the Great. What's your reaction to the verdict? Obviously, I feel great compassion for the children, but I am very, very happy. I am very proud to have vindicated my client and his rights. And I, I want to say thank you to my own children and to my mother. Mom, I won. I won. And I just, I just, I want to say, just say, David, we did it. No! We did it, David. No. Who's David? He's my lover who, who's always been there for me. Uh, David, my darling, I love you, David. I love you, David. Obviously a very emotional trial for everyone here. Did you expect this verdict? We're disappointed. Our case was dismissed and we've now exhausted every possible legal recourse. But we haven't lost everything. While we were told today there's no law requiring Starbucks to identify himself, there's more to this than just legal obligation. There's us and there's him. And Beyond any law, there are human beings. Ultimately, the final decision is Starbucks. He's under no legal obligation to identify himself. But now that he's seen all of us, he may well decide to do so. The decision is his. 
there's been a lot of unfavorable comments about Starbuck and all of this media coverage. We'd really just like our father to know that in our eyes, he's not a criminal or a freak. To us, he's someone, he's someone who gave life and happiness where it was badly needed. Congratulations, darling. I had it. I had pitched the perfect game, and I had to screw the whole thing up. My mother saw the whole thing on TV. She must have been surprised to find out that you had a male lover. No. She said she always suspected it. She told me we'd make a lovely couple. And your kids? They think it's cool. I'm just wondering, um, really just theoretically, but if I decided to identify myself, would I lose all the money from the counter suit? Yeah, I think you would. And it always says that, uh, that I don't have a life. So, um, I officially set out to try and do the right thing. It's harder than I thought. For once in my life, I'd like to make the right decision. Once. For once in my life, I'd like to be a normal person. How would a normal person handle a situation like this? A normal person would not be in this situation. Let's just say that a normal person had a slight lapse of judgment and donated sperm 693 times. What would they do? What would my brothers do? Your brothers are not mentally equipped to deal with a situation like this. When you get right down to it, you're probably one of the few people on this earth able to deal with such a situation. <laughs> Why not just tell them? As you know, I have some money problems. Yeah, your dad's. You know, I grew up in terrible terrible poverty. Yes, I know, Pop. I know. When I left Warsaw to go to the States, my father gave me ten dollars. It was everything he had. I couldn't turn down his help, so I promised him I'd pay him back a thousand times over once I got rich. My father died. When your mother and I still didn't have a cent. I... I always wondered what was harder for him. 
not being able to give his children enough or not being with them when they hit hard times. My great good fortune in life is to see you boys every day. That for me is success. So like my father, I will not help you. Here is ten dollars. It brought me good luck. With ten dollars I built my empire. So take the ten dollars. And also take... It's your share of the meat store. It's your inheritance. And small bills to pay off your debts. I'm scared I'll disappoint them. Why would they be disappointed? I'm a meat truck driver. I'm an incompetent meat truck driver. True. You are incompetent. It takes you four times longer to deliver meat than anyone else. But wherever you go, people love you. They're going to love you. Everyone loves you. family is here to see you. Is he healthy? Yes. Does that mean he can work tomorrow?
maybe a, a bit strange, a bit oversized, but it's my life. The second point. It's a very long first point. The first point was long. The second point, the marriage proposal was not a scam. Second point was much shorter. I need you in my life. See it in your eyes. 